I went to my Arab friends. Excuse me. Um, I just want you to help me interpret this verse. They go, oh dear. <laughs> no, I don't look on their face. Yeah, let's try this verse. Let's try this. Just word by word. I just want to, just literally, don't read into it anything. They said, Jeff, we hardly ever read the Quran. Okay, that'll help. <laughs> so the verse says, Zalahum al Shaitan Minha. So we read it. Uh, word by word, take me in that list. So, 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 Zalahum Shaitan. Satan did what? Satan what? What's the word mean? Well, he said it's the causal form, form four of the verb uh, zella, which means to slip. It means uh, to cause to slip, to make slip. He said, are you sure about that? He looked at me, make slip. <laughs> <laughs> Satan made them slip? I th we got on an Arabic English dictionary, I looked it up. It says slip. This is a momentary loss of Focus. A brief loss of focus. The greatest sin? A brief loss of focus? My brother Mark, whenever he used to make a mistake, he often used to toss it up. I say, I'm sorry, Jeff, I slipped up. My Uncle Bob, when he used to pick me up from work 10 minutes late every day, or 15 minutes, he was an alcoholic also, my Uncle Bob. But he used to always come and pick me up for work late. He used to say, sorry, Jeff, slipped up. Won't happen again every single day. <laughs> but the connotation is it's something minor. And here it was. It means something minor. It's a slip. Satan caused them to slip and expelled them from the state in which they were. They were no longer the state in which they were. How could that be a slip? I thought about it. Wait a minute, Jeff. You just can't let go of your background. Was it anything but a slip? Was it really all so bad? Did they murder somebody? Did they commit highway robbery? Did they commit grand theft? They didn't even bump off a 7-Eleven. <laughs> they had a couple pieces of fruit. <laughs> You're not going to throw somebody into jail and throw in a lock and key for eating an apple, for God's sake. It doesn't say it was an apple, but, you know, they ate something. Yeah, it's just a slip. According to the Quran, everything it says in the Quran, everything it will say after this, it was just a slip, it was a minor thing. And God, for the next verse, forgives them right away. But here it says, But Satan caused them to slip and expelled them from the state in which they were. And we said, Go down, all of you together. Some of you will be adversaries of others. Hmm, I thought. Hmm. Well, the angels alluded to that thought. And then on earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. Dwelling place and provision? No, you got it all wrong. Earth is not your dwelling place and provision. Earth will be pain for you. That's what it says. That's what it's supposed to say. You're going to be in pain there, and you're going to, you know, you're going to stub your toe on the ground, and it's going to be thorns, and it's going to work by the sweat of your brow, and you're going to be a working creature like a slave. And then, then what? What else? And then the woman. Where's the woman? And then the woman. You, you, because you tempted man and leave yourself with Satan, you will suffer everyday labor pain. <laughs> you, you must be heard it. And the worst of all, even though you're more intelligent than man, because you duped him with a leaf and by leaving with eight, you, he will be made to rule over you. <laughs> it's powerful. It is powerful. But here in the Quran, I'm not making fun of it. I love that story. Always did. Here the Quran is emphasizing and using this vehicle to just bring out a different perspective on life. Because here, God doesn't lose it. He's not even angry. He says, go you all down, some of you will be adversaries of others, and that earth will be your dwelling place and provision for a time. The dwelling place, you know, where the Quran uses for dwelling place, it's like a place of comfortable repose. The word that uses for uh, Provision, what a bad interpretation. It means like something that's enjoyable to eat, things that are enjoyable to dine on. Earth, it's not, it's not the words of an enraged deity. When I walked into the hotel yesterday and they said, uh, Mr. Lang, your uh, boat will be room 646, and uh, for your provision, there will be a continental breakfast in the morning. I didn't go, <gasps> what do you mean? 
It's not the word that somebody is angry at you. And then, it's okay, God's not angry. Why is he putting that on earth, I thought. What's going on here? And then the next verse confused me more. Then Adam received words from his Lord. And his Lord turned to him mercifully. For he's truly oft returning, ever merciful. Let's all this talk about mercy, forgiveness, and turning towards Adam. In the Quran, the word tuab means that God turns towards others. He just doesn't forgive. He reaches out, he assuages, he guides, he inspires, he helps. But in any case, and Adam received words from his Lord, and he turned to him, for truly is oft returning the merciful. The next verse we find later in the Quran, we find he just it says that explicitly, he forgave them. And notice that most of the responsibilities we put on Adam. But in any case, God forgives them. Then okay, then why not just put them back into heaven? We turn to the next verse. And again, it emphasizes this going down business. But in case I thought that the Quran was saying that they're put down on earth as a punishment, once again, the Quran shows me a different light. It says, we said, go down from the state, all of you together, and truly there will come to you guidance from me. And whoever follows my guidance has nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. God in this verse is comforting the human. They made a mistake. They're now in this unfamiliar environment. They feel afraid. They feel remorse. They feel insecure. What does God do? He reaches out to them and assures them, I know this is hard. I know you're afraid. But you have nothing to fear. Just follow my guidance. It'll come to you. It'll come to you in many forms. But whoever follows my guidance, they have nothing to fear, nor shall they grieve. It's like I sometimes say to my children, I know sometimes life is hard, but it is necessary. You need to go through this. This is how you grow. And I thought again, wait a minute, now he's definitely forgiving them. Okay, then put them back into heaven. You know? <laughs> Conflicting with my, you know, the way I always thought about this. I mean, once, like for example, my daughter Jamila. I hope you don't mind me giving you a quick example. My daughter Jamila. And I'll try to tie this up in 25 minutes. Sorry for taking so long. My daughter Jamila uh, did something wrong. And she was 12 years old at the time. And I said to Jamila, I said, Jamila, so what you did, it wasn't bad, but it was still bad. I'm going to dock your allowance this month. Your five dollars. She said to me, she didn't say to me, she looked at me and the tears started to stream. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says I'm the biggest marshmallow in the world. And I am the biggest marshmallow. I look at the tears and go, all right, all right. <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive you, honey. Just, you know, to cry. I realize, you know, this is something you have to go through. I forgive you. She, Immediately the tears stop as if she turned them off the clock. <laughs> then she looks at me and says, without skipping a beat, uh, do I still get the five dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Typical Jamila. I said, no, now wait a minute. I want you to learn from this. And I think it's important that I take off. She interrupts me. Daddy, either punish me or forgive me. Punish me, don't give me the five dollars. You forgave me, give me the five dollars. <laughs> Her logic was unassailable. I told her, okay, you got the five dollars. <laughs> but okay, God forgives them. Put them back in heaven. Why not? Obviously, that's what you should do. And I thought about it. Wait a minute, Jeff. Nowhere in this does it suggest that humans on earth as a punishment. When God says I'm about to put the humans on earth to be my vicegerents, the angels ask the obvious question. That would be a perfect place for... The Quran to clarify, yes, I know, they are destructive creatures, and when they do that kind of violence, then I'm going to put them on earth as a punishment. No. It says, no, you didn't see, I see the big picture. See, they're very intelligent, and they're moral beings, and they could grow morally and spiritually. And when does he finally put them on earth? They go through this development pattern. Not when they grow spiritually, not when they grow intellectually, not when we find out all about them. They finally get ready to go down to earth. When does God feel they're ready? When they exercise their first independent choice, their ability that God gave them to make an independent choice. Then they're ready. Then he puts them on earth. And then he forgives them immediately. I just finally got to my head. It was banging my head. Boom. Jeff, think, 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 think. You're not here as a punishment. 